everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World. Today I'm going to show you how to put together a solar power system. Right here on my desk, it's going to be a very simple and easy to understand and follow video. This is going to be along the lines of what my channel started out with, off-grid living and solar power. So let's get you down here to the desk and I'll show you what we need to get started. Right here is everything you need to put together your own home solar power system. It starts with one primary thing, the battery. This is a deep cycle marine starting battery. Any lead acid battery will do for your first home solar power system. I've always advised people, if you want to get into solar power, start out with the basics. And I'll put links down to the important things here below that you need. Um, get a battery, any battery, a lawnmower battery, an alarm battery, a motorcycle battery, car battery, or a deep cycle slash starting battery, any, any lead acid battery. You can get into lithium ion later on, but lead acid is very forgiving and easy to work with. Then we need some 12 gauge hookup wire I have here red and black. We have a stripper, wire stripper and um, crimper tool. A Phillips screwdriver and that'll become apparent why in a minute. We need a solar charge controller. This is the only thing you're really going to have to buy and spend time looking into and I'll get back to some details on the solar charge controller in a minute. I have here one that you saw me buy a while back that I promised I would show you how to assemble and I'm going to do that now. This happens to be allegedly a 30 amp solar charge controller. Very cheap. We have here a box of crimp on connectors. I'm only going to need a few but we need some crimp on connectors. Most importantly ones that will fit the battery the ring terminals right there. So we need to crimp on ring terminals to fit the screw on connections of the battery. If your battery is different you'll have to deal with that. There are screw on um, terminals where you can put the wire in and screw down and clamp that on. But w work with what you have. I'm starting very basic here today. And we have a solar panel I'm using the All Powers Folding Solar Panel because that's what fits in my house at this time to show you this. And some MC4 connectors. I'll show you these when I open them up as we get to that. But these are solar panel connectors. This is everything you need right here to build your own home solar power system. There is one more important part of putting together your own home solar powered system. This part is optional, but for me it's a necessity. It's a cup of coffee. I'm looking upside down. Uh, okay. Now, I first want to start out with the solar charge controller. This is the heart of the system, quite literally. The solar car charge controller is the link between your solar panels and your battery and, depending on how you want to use it, your load because the solar charge controller has here um, solar panel connectors, battery connections, and a load connection. This particular device will ensure that you don't drain your battery too low. So if you, if you use the load connection and you run the load through this thing, through this device, and your battery starts to get too low, this will disconnect your load. Um, often this is used in outdoor day-night lighting systems and I've never used it myself. I always watch the power myself and manually run things. But, you know, if it's your first ever, I would advise go ahead and use that if you're using a small load. And uh, at this point I want to also mention if this is your first ever solar power setup, then just get any old battery, lead acid, get any old charge controller, and a small cheap solar panel, as long as it's rated for 12 volts. And that's all you need. These three items are the key to 
to your home solar power system, your, your first starter system ever. And I've often told people through the years, start very simple, learn about it, and then expand from there. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, a quick little background. This battery I restored. I bought this for s scrap metal price. And it was in my garage. I've been restoring it for, oh, maybe a month. I don't know. It's now up to 84, 85% capacity. Um, not related to this video, but I do restore batteries. And I just wanted to mention that. And all of this is going up in my watchtower when I'm done. So, if you're doing this for your home and your first experimenter, um, you know, your, your first time ever in experimenting, put it on a board. Screw this down to a board that you can hang on the wall, set your battery down below on the floor, and then you can run your solar panels outside. Shorter wires, the shortest wires between the panel and the controller, the better. So give that some consideration when setting up. Now I've cleared the workspace to make this simple. I've got out two, there's actually a 12 gauge and a 14 gauge. But I like to use two different color connectors. If you're very clear in what you're doing, you can use the same. But I like to use two different colored. I have a yellow and a blue. My lighter color I always use for positive, and my darker color I always use for negative. That's just my thing, and it helps me distinguish what I'm doing so I don't make a mistake. My solar charge controller is going to go in my watchtower somewhere near the battery, not far away. So I'm going to have... I'm going to make a wire, start with your negative here, I hold it on and I get an idea how far I want to go. I'm going to give myself a couple feet so that wherever I put this, I can then mount the charge controller near the battery. I make them both the same size, get a red and a black, red for positive, black for negative. Now, I'm going to strip the ends off these, give myself enough room, strip both ends. If you don't have a wire stripper, I'll put a link down below. They're a very handy tool to have. I used to use my teeth when I was younger. My teeth were pretty strong. I don't do that anymore. Now, take one end for your battery here. Take your lighter colored for your positive and slide that up in there. Make sure it's in there. Um, you can see the wire come out the other side so it's snug. And then take your crimper, put it on here to the right color. These are color coded. And your terminals are usually coded with a red, yellow, or blue coating or sheathing to help you identify it. That's snug. Always test it. Rather have it come off in your hands now on the bench than later in the field. A loose wire can cause fire. You don't want that. Always test your connections. All right, nice and snug. Good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is on here in the middle there's a battery plus and minus you won't be able to see it it's a very tiny indicator in plastic with raised markings I'm gonna loosen the terminals this screwdriver barely fits loosen the terminals make sure that you have a screwdriver that fits before you start this so you don't become annoyed make sure very clearly that you get the, the black wire in the minus marked terminal okay and the positive wire the red wire in the plus marked terminal it's very important to make sure you get that right tighten your wire check it loose wires cause fires Put the positive in there, the red wire where it says plus, tighten it down, 
This is a very cheap one, so the whole circuit board moves with me. Now, double check your work. Always double check your work before you do any connections at all. Minus goes to my black, okay? Plus goes to my red, all right? Very clear. You don't want to make any mistakes. Now I'm going to take off my screws and set them on top of the battery near the terminal, okay? And then I'm going to take, minus is closer to me, so I'll take minus, and I'll put it on here, and then I'll tighten that down. I'll snug it later, but you, uh, when you're all done, you want to snug these up nice and tight to avoid fires. I always double check again before I connect this. Double check your markers, plus here, your red. And then we're going to see the gauge on the, uh, the display here should light up. As soon as I connect that, yes. It's not got a highlighted display, but you can see. Now here, this next step is very important to be incredibly careful and identify your pieces correctly. Here we have the connectors that will go into the solar panel. All right, most, most, of your commercial solar panels are going to have these connectors here. All right, they look like this. Okay, and they're easily connected and released, and they have waterproof gaskets, that red gasket, so that they make a watertight seal. They're made for outdoors. And the important thing here is if you have the solar panel already and they have these connectors, then I take one and I look inside it because you, these come in a, in a bag usually just jumbled together. And I look inside and I identify what part goes in here because you, a, a, you have two pieces, a tube, and one that inserts. So basically a male and a female. Okay, and they go together. Okay, inside these plastic cases. So identify which is which. Basically a long tube and then one that inserts inside. And I look in here, and this one has the tube, so I'll put this one with this, okay? And I look in this one, and this one has the male connector, so that'll go inside this one. Just double check. Always make sure to double check your work before you crimp on or connect any wires to anything. The next step, very important, is identifying the plus and the minus from your solar panel so you know which wire to go to your solar charge controller, okay? So this one is marked positive. So this one goes to together with this one. So this will be my positive wire here. All right. I'm going to do that first so I have no confusion. I've gone ahead and cut a wire, very long, that I figure should reach from my watchtower solar panel to the floor where the battery is going. We need the crimping tool and to strip off some wire on both ends. It's hiding from me. Okay. Now, here I'd like you to pay attention. This opens up. Okay, and it's very important to take one of your wires and feed it through this cap. Otherwise, you'll never be able to get it on. You put your end on and you crimp it on nice and snug. Okay, making sure your cap is still reachable here. And then you come in from the back here and you push this up and through and it should push through that hole inside, feed it in and it should lock and snap in place at some point. It should. You might have to coax it. Some of these are not that easy. And I need to get a small screwdriver and push it on the metal to get that snapped into place. Yes. Okay. These always give me trouble. 
So that happened on camera, good. Now slide your little uh, piece up in here and then screw this on nice and tight. Now I'm going to run this wire down to the other end and I can put this in my charge controller. Under the positive there's a little solar panel symbol here. And there's a plus and a minus. So I'm going to put that under the plus. Make sure your wire is straight. Nice and neat. You don't want any wire hairs, loose wire strands. Hold that and then screw that back down nice and firm. Good and snug. You don't want to break anything. Make sure that's good and snug. Okay, that one's done. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to strip the ends on this. I'll be right back. Undo your cap. Put that on your wire first so it's there. Take your wire and lay it down in here. Okay, hold it with your finger and use your crimping tool and press this one tab down inside and flat on your wire. Press it tight. Now take your other side and bring it back around over the top and crush it down. Make sure it's tight. So now you have it nicely crimped on to your wire and it's tight. Now you can feed this one in through the bottom. See if it'll snap in for me. Nope. There, it snapped. Good. And then you screw this on and that'll compress around the end of your wire giving you some stress release on, relief on there. Now I've already pre-stripped the other end of this so I can take this and put it in my charge controller under the minus terminal. Black for minus Now that's on. Now, if it was nice weather, I would take you outside and I'd have my solar panel hooked up and I'd take these two leads and I can hook them onto my solar panels like so. They just pop in. So now our black wire is to the minus and it snaps in place. Our red wire goes to our plus of the solar panel and it snaps in place. Now if the solar panel was open and in the sun we would be charging our battery right now. That's all there is to it, hooking up the battery first to the charge controller and the solar panel to the charge controller. Now it's all nice and fine and your battery is charging if you were, had the panel in the sun and if the sun was shining everything's nice and happy your battery's charging but you can't do anything with it. Well in this case I have some USB outputs on here or USB outputs um, that I could use but let's say you don't. Now I have a load I'm going to put on the battery. You could use a power inverter and you could use lights. It depends on what you want to run but in this case I have a multi cigarette lighter adapter with multiple output ports for cigarette lighters and multiple USB ports. There's one, two, three, four USB ports. And I'm going to put this up in my watchtower, this multi-port adapter. Before disconnecting your battery terminals, make sure you did disconnect your solar panels. If you were charging, you absolutely, absolutely never disconnect your battery with the solar panels connected. Okay? Always disconnect your solar panels before your battery. Now, I can take the negative, I can loosen the terminal, 
Keep that in mind. Always, always disconnect your solar panels before your battery. I hold this on here anyway, just so it has connection. Put your negative on. And screw this down, and then tighten it really tight. For demonstration purposes, I don't have the wrench here. I'm just demonstrating. I'm going to be moving this out to the watchtower soon. And then you can take your positive wire and do your positive terminal here. And connect that. Alright, now I have my load hooked up. I can turn on the power. This one's really cool. And it shows me the voltage of the battery. This is more accurate than the charge controller's readout. This is flickering between 12.4 and 12.5. I don't trust these cheap controllers. This is 12.6, which is more accurate because I've measured the battery. Anyway, this is really cool. Now I have a device here on, here on the battery so I can connect a load. And just for demonstration, I'm going to hook up my cell phone to the USB port and plug it into charge. And the display should come on. Da -dink. There's a happy sound, and you saw it, it's charging. So now I'm charging my cell phone off my homemade, simple solar power system. And now I could connect my solar panels back up if they were out in the sun and continue charging my battery while powering a load. Very basic setup. And this is what I advise if anybody wants to get into learning about home solar power, get a cheap battery, cheap charge controller, cheap solar panel, and some kind of a load. And experiment and play. If you start small and you start cheap and you make mistakes, it's okay. We all make mistakes and it's a learning experience. And uh, that's what this is about. So I always start out very cheap and very basic and then learn from there. And that's what I advise every one of you to do. If you've never done this before, just jump right in. Start out. These are like, I don't know, $10. You can get your charge controllers for $10. They're crazy cheap. Get an old battery out of a lawnmower or an old vehicle or something. As long as it's got some power left, you can experiment with it. You know, the old alarm systems and battery backup systems. Get any kind of an old battery. Hook it up to a cheap charge controller. Get yourself a cheap solar panel. They're running, what, uh, you can get a solar panel now for as low as like $20, $50 now. So go ahead and get a cheap solar panel. I'll put some links down below for you to get. go ahead and get all the things that I've used here today. So you can go ahead and build your own home solar power system. Now later, probably on a separate video, I'll be taking all of this out to my watchtower and installing this properly where it's going to stay. But this was comfortable and convenient for demonstration today. Please check out my Patreon. The link is down below. And for as low as a dollar a month, you can help support me to be able to finance projects like this. I do spend more money on my projects than I actually earn from my videos anymore. Uh, everything has, you know, everything has a price. And I like to do these demonstrations for you guys, and I'd like to keep on doing so. I also am going to later talk about inverters in detail. It's too much for this video. This was about solar charge controllers and a very simple solar power system. Basically three parts. Well, I hope you liked this video. Please give me a thumb up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. I got some more awesome videos to come. I'll talk to you later.